The Lord be with you. <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus set out from Capernaum and went into the district of Judea and across the Jordan River. Again, crowds gathered around him, and as was his custom, he again taught them. The Pharisees approached and asked, Is it lawful for a husband to divorce? wife. They were testing Jesus. Jesus said to them in reply, What did Moses command you? They replied, Moses permitted the husband to write a bill of divorce and dismiss his wife. But Jesus told them, because of the hardness of your hearts, he wrote you this command. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. In the house, the disciples again questioned him about this. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. This is the good news of our salvation. If we study this passage in the context of human ethics, we can see the beauty of conjugal love, especially when it blossoms forth in procreation. When an offspring is brought forth, when a wife makes her husband a father, and the father, through their procreation, makes his wife a mother. And what modern biologists have told us is amazing. It is clear when we see other persons that some of their characteristics come from their mother, other characteristics, physical and then emotional, come from their father. So there is a fusion of life in procreation. And the modern biologists have told us that 50% of the chromosomes, the 46 chromosomes that make up a human person, come from the mother, 23 come from the mother, 23 come from the father. And so there's a fusion in the offspring which symbolizes the fusion of life between a mother and a father in their conjugal love as husband and wife. But there's something more for us who have experienced the real presence of Jesus in the seven sacraments 
of the Catholic Church. Because one of those sacraments is the sacrament of matrimony. And here we are not talking only about human ethics of marriage as it develops throughout history in different cultures and in different religions. We're talking about something which is overwhelming. The real presence of our Lord in the family through the sacrament of matrimony. Therefore, for two baptized and believing Christians who get married, Jesus is there to witness that marriage and to bless them as a Catholic family, which means they're in a whole new understanding and context, a new setting beyond human marriage. They are not only bringing offspring into this world through <clears throat> the human procreation. They are, in the eyes of Jesus, bringing new members into his church. And that is why a Catholic couple is very happy not only at the birth of their offspring, whether a boy or a girl, infant, but celebrates their baptism and is also, also overjoyed at their first communion and will accompany them until they reach the time when they will make their own vocation, whether to follow Jesus in the religious life, in the priesthood, or to get married in the sacrament of matrimony. And so we must not simply understand the relationships between husband and wife, mother and father and children on the ethical level, the universal human level, but we must understand this mystery is part of the church. And that is why Pope John Paul II described the church as a family of families. And Vatican II describes the sacrament of matrimony with the resulting Catholic family as a little church. Jesus is really present 24-7 in a happy, loving, committed Christian.